Hey friends, how's it going? My name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be starting a new reading vlog where I'm going to be reading some new thriller and horror things. I'm going to be reading three books for this vlog. The first book that I'm going to be reading is actually Lone Women. This is by Victor LaVale and this is the only horror book that I'm going to be reading for this video. This is a horror book from an author that I have read one book of his before and the thing with his horror books is that I always want to give them a chance but I feel like sometimes they can be a little bit out of my comfort zone because this one is a bit historical. It does take place during the year 1915 but I'm really excited to pick this one up and give it a shot because I've been hearing some really great things about this one. I've heard that the atmosphere is just really spooky. I'm also finally going to be reading For You and Only You by Caroline Kepinis. This is actually the fourth book in the You, you know, Joe Goldberg series so I'm really excited to pick this one up. And then lastly I'm also going to be reading The Last Word by Taylor Adams in this video and this is actually my book troop book club pick for the month of May which I am very excited about. Taylor Taylor Adams is the author of No Exit, which is one of my favorite thriller books that I've ever read, and so expectations are a little bit high going into this one, not gonna lie. But yeah, before we do jump into today's video, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. You might not know this, but HelloFresh does more than just delicious dinners, because not only can you choose from about 40 different recipes every week, but you can also choose from over 100 different items to more round out your order, whether that's snacks, dessert, they really do have it all. My favorite thing about HelloFresh is that the food gets delivered right to your door. All the ingredients are super fresh and it's so nice that they all come with pre-proportioned ingredients so that you don't have to worry about when you're making the dinner and then be like, oh shoot, I forgot that one thing that I need, which is honestly something that happens to me more often than I care to admit. But I love that too, that you're not feeling like you're wasting any food because everything is needed that you get. There's nothing left over at the end of it so you don't have anything that you're throwing out that you didn't use. And not to mention it's nice because HelloFresh is so much cheaper than grocery shopping and it's 25% cheaper than takeout. I also just think that HelloFresh makes cooking so much fun and so enjoyable and I feel like I learned so much with every one of these HelloFresh meals that I make. I also do really love that with HelloFresh they really do have something for everyone because they have meat and veggie options, they have veggie options, they have pescatarian options, fit and wholesome. Whatever you're looking for with your food, HelloFresh really does have something for everyone and I think it's also nice that you can customize these meals because if there's a certain meat or a certain veggie that you don't really want with that meal you can customize the meals just swap out a meat swap out a veggie so that it's more for your personal liking I recently made one of my favorite like this is probably one of my top favorite meals to make with HelloFresh and it's these beef flottas supreme with pico de gallo and smoky red pepper crema oh my gosh these flottas are absolutely incredible I cannot believe the flavor on these things I honestly wasn't even the biggest fan of flottas like those are not something that I eat regularly until I made this meal and I get like really ridiculously excited for dinner when I know that we're gonna be having these because I just know that it's gonna hit so hard. So you can go to hellofresh.com and use my code GABBYREADS16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Isn't that incredible? Oh my gosh, go to hellofresh.com, use my code GABBYREADS16 and get 16 free meals and free shipping. That's a lot of free food. That's incredible. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video and now let's Let's get to the reading vlog. Hello, it is a Thursday afternoon and I have started reading Lone Women. I've actually been on um, some Patreon reading sprints with Jordaline, which has been super fun. I haven't done uh, reading sprints with Jordaline in like over a year. Like I think the last time that we did reading sprints together was sometime last summer. And so it's been super fun, you know, just like catching up with her and hanging out. And I have started on Lone Women and now I'm all the way up to page 110. And you know, this is one that I was a little bit nervous to read because this one is a horror book, but it is historical fiction 
horror. And, you know, historical fiction can either go like one of two ways for me. It's something I either really love or just find really hard to get into. And at the beginning, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of struggling with this one because this one, it takes place in the year 1915 and it's about this woman and she has, you know, like there's like wagons. It's like really like older times, you know, like so it was definitely a little bit hard to get into. But it's really interesting because, you know, it's about this woman who's kind of like out on her own. She has this kind of like mysterious past that you're trying to figure out. And she also has this trunk that is also very mysterious and like you're kind of wondering like what is in her trunk and like why is she taking it everywhere with her and it's very um not what I was expecting you know it takes about uh 80 ish pages or so at least for me it took about 80 ish pages or so before I actually got kind of invested because you kind of start to learn like what's actually going on with like the horror elements of this book and let's just say it's not really what I was expecting I'm kind of like wait what so I'm a little bit like taken off guard by like the horror in this book and I'm kind of like a little bit here for it now I don't know at least with this book something that I'm really appreciating is that the chapters are very short like the chapters are just absolutely flying they're only like you usually like a few pages long or even like one or two pages long so it's reading very quickly which I do appreciate. I feel like it is quite fast paced because of how short the chapters are and it makes it feel like I'm just flying through it. I also do really like this main character and there's also been kind of like subtle hints of like this romance kind of happening so I also do enjoy that. And the horror aspect of the book that has you know kind of recently been introduced is the thing that is keeping me reading at this point because now I'm kind of like wait what the heck is going on? And so I'm enjoying it. I feel like at this point I don't know if I see myself giving this more than three stars. Like I guess it just really depends on how how it goes. It's mostly just the historical setting, to be honest, that I'm not the biggest fan of, which I know is like not a really good critique for this because it's like, what was I really expecting, you know, reading historical fiction horror? But I thought I would give this one a go anyways, you know, because this is an author that I've definitely had my eye on. Because this is that same author that I read his other book. I think it's called like The Ballad of Black Tom or something like that. That was one that I read by him last year. And that was also one that it's like, I love his writing and I think he has potential, but the genres that he writes in are not always like my my favorite like that other one that I read by him had a lot of like magic and kind of like fantasy elements and so it wasn't really my thing and now with this one with like the kind of historical setting I don't really know if this is my thing or not but I'm still invested enough in this story right now that I do want to finish it even though I don't know if it's going to be like a new favorite for me but anyways I'm still doing reading sprints right now so I'm going to continue listening to this one I would love to be able to finish this one today so that's kind of like my goal I think I'm just going to make some coffee and maybe make a little bit of a snack. It's almost three o'clock in the afternoon, so I'm just hoping to continue listening to this one and I will update you with thoughts when I have them. <laughs> the next afternoon. It's been a whole, you know, almost 24 hours since the last time that I updated you because this morning I went out and got breakfast with my dad and my sister and it was really nice. And then after I got home, you know, I had an iced coffee from this local spot that was right by the restaurant. And then after I got home, I just got back into bed and finished reading Lone Women. And this book, I feel similarly about it now as the same that I was yesterday. Like, I feel like this is a book that I desperately wanted to love. I feel 
feel like I can't tell if it's like this author's writing that's just not for me even though I desperately want to love this author because I think he has some really great ideas and like the horror in this book is honestly so well written. Like the horror is genuinely really creepy and I feel like he writes it so well in a way where you can really feel like all of your senses can like feel the horror you know what I mean like he'll write it in a way that's like so visual and it's almost like you can you feel like you can smell it you know what I'm saying like he really writes horror where you feel all of your senses just being like Ugh, you know about the horror in this book and I think the horror aspects in this book were definitely the most intriguing for me but then there was there was so much about this book that just kind of bored me to tears I think it was kind of like the western kind of vibes to it and like the historical setting and like the time period it's just so hard for me to get invested in this kind of stuff and like there's a reason why I don't read books like this because they usually just kind of bore me and this one was no different really like there were some moments like the pacing was kind of all over the place for me because the beginning like the very beginning I thought was pretty intriguing but then it got kind of slow and then around like somewhere around the 30% mark something happened that I was like oh oh shit okay like this is where we're going and then I was really invested again but then the book just goes in waves of like interest and then not interested at all I really did though I loved like the last paragraph of this book I thought that was very beautifully written and it almost like gave me chills like I really liked how it ended but it's also like so crazy to me because this book you know it's only like 275 pages or something but it felt so much longer than that and I don't know if that's because of like this isn't my kind of book you know this isn't one that was easy for me to just fly through so overall um this one is just okay for me I think I am gonna give this one three stars not surprising at all you know what was pretty cool though is that in this book um she names her horse Obadiah which is so cool because you know Rachel's boyfriend her, his name is Obed and like I've never seen any character in any book ever named Obed and like his name's Obadiah too. I mean they spelt it different than how Obed spells it but isn't that so cool? Like I've never seen the name Obadiah used in a book before so I just thought that was kind of cool but otherwise this one was just okay for me which I'm kind of bummed about. I was hoping to love this one more. I feel like I do still want to read books from this author in the future but I don't think I'm gonna read it if they have genres that I'm really not interested in reading. Like I would love to read a horror book from him that's more just like a regular contemporary maybe like psychological kind of horror book like I don't know if I'd want to read more horror from this author if he only writes kind of like fantasy horror or historical kind of western horror I don't know if it's my thing you know but I'm glad I gave it a shot anyways I think the next book that I'm gonna read is For You and Only You by Caroline Kepnes this is the uh, fourth book in the Joe Goldberg series and this one I decided I wanted to pick this one up next because I just got the audiobook checked out to me from my library. My library, once again, is incredible. The Libby app, highly recommend you download it because it's fantastic. But yeah, this is the fourth book and my history with these you books is that the first book for me, the book you, is five stars. Like one of my favorite books of all time. I loved it. I thought it was so unique and so different. And then books two and three in the series, I have kind of mixed feelings about. The story was getting a little bit repetitive or it was just kind of like the same thing over and over again. But you know what's interesting? is that this is the fourth book right and the fourth season of the show you is already out on Netflix so I think it's kind of interesting because I don't think that the books are the same as the TV show anymore like I think the books it's actually starting to take a different path from what the show is which is actually good I think in my opinion because I was not a huge fan of the fourth season of you I actually didn't even finish it I think I only watched like the first four episodes and I was just so bored out of my mind so I didn't watch it this one's interesting because it says we're following Joe Goldberg to the halls of Harvard and so I'm I'm pretty sure in the show he was not at Harvard and so I'm thinking like this is gonna be a completely different you know storyline from what's happening in the fourth season of you but oh my gosh can you believe how thick this thing is this thing is over 420 pages like oh my gosh there better be a reason for this book to be this long or else i'm gonna be very upset but yeah anyways i think i'm going to start on this one next which i'm very excited about i'm ready to get back into the world and the mind of joe goldberg let's do it
All right, hello, it is the next afternoon, but I wanted to update you because I've been reading for you and only you and I'm about a hundred pages in right now. And I am so excited. I've been like tabbing a lot in this book, which is like super exciting for me because you know, as I said, I wasn't the biggest fan of books two and three in this series. And so I wasn't really sure what I was expecting with this one. This one, oh my gosh, it started off absolutely amazing. Like the first chapter was so freaking good. I feel like Caroline Kepnes just writes Joe Goldberg so well. Like his inner narration and his thoughts is just absolutely hilarious. And like, yeah, this book is long, but it's because like every scene is just like, you know, like you get his inner thoughts about everyone's dialogue. So it's funny because he'll be like calling out their bullshit in his thoughts in between their dialogue moments. And it's just so funny. Oh my gosh. Like I just really, really love Joe Goldberg's like dialogue in his head. I just think it's so freaking hilarious. And the first chapter started off very strong. I was like, oh my God, is this going to be a five-star book? Like I was loving it straight at the beginning. You know, something that's interesting about this book too, is that COVID has taken place in this world. So we're living in a world where it's kind of like after the pandemic, uh, but COVID has definitely happened. So it's also funny because he's been talking about like how awful the like Karens of the pandemic were. And he's kind of like poking fun at that too. So like that's been really entertaining. And you know, in typical like Joe Goldberg fashion, he's falling for this girl who her name is Wonder, which is also just really funny. I feel like Joe Goldberg always falls for these girls that have the most like ridiculous kind of like unusual names. So that's really entertaining. But it's funny because she is she's also a writer So he kind of talks about how like they're both better than everyone else because they're like writers and they like understand language And it's just so entertaining too because he talks about how she's like a goodreads girl <laughs> And kind of like makes fun of people that like review books on goodreads Which is hilarious because you know, i'm part of that, you know, like I review books on goodreads So like I totally understand everything that he's talking about when he's like he says yes You're a goodreads girl goodreads is your world away from from this one. You talk to strangers about books because you still live at home. I haven't read all your reviews on Goodreads. There are too fucking many, but you use that phrase a lot. My tendency is to love. I also love like right on like one of the first pages, he says, I need to Taylor Swift it. I need to calm down. But oh my God, some of his lines just like genuinely crack me up. Like when he says, this is the worst part of being a fucking man when I have to pretend to care about people like Diane fucking Jans. And he's like, we are language buffs. You would say that the world's most misunderstood, overused word is iconic and i think the world's most misunderstood overused word is love aka our love is going to be iconic <laughs> That's so funny. That is so true. I really do think the words iconic and love are like totally overused and like they don't really mean the same thing that they used to mean. But so far, I'm enjoying this book a lot more than I was expecting to. I'm enjoying this one a lot more than books two and three so far. I feel like this is kind of back to like the OG Joe Goldberg that I just really loved from the first book. And his thoughts and his like dialogue is just so freaking entertaining. And it's already been a little bit twisty, you know, because he's obviously going really hard for this girl named wonder and he's like into his typical you know like these books are kind of typical in the formula i guess where like he gets really into a girl and then there's some there's someone that kind of like gets in the way of him having access to that girl and then he takes matters into his own hands to like do something about it you know and it is kind of like i don't know like it is kind of formulaic in that way but this one oh my gosh there's already been a twist right around the 100 page mark that i'm just like oh my god like bruh and it's just so entertaining. And so, I don't know, I'm really enjoying this. I'm just surprised by how much I'm enjoying it, but it's almost two o'clock. Poured myself a little iced coffee and I think I am just going to continue to read. I might actually go upstairs. It's actually pretty warm, which is why I came down here because yesterday was like almost 80 degrees. Oh my gosh, for Washington, that is so warm. Like that is the warmest day we've had in a long time. And today it's still about like 75, like it's still pretty warm. And so like the heat is just rising in this apartment. And I was like, I was wondering how summers were gonna be in this apartment, you know, because my room Room and the office is on the second floor. So I was like, oh my God, it's gonna get so toasty up there. And it definitely did. Like last night was like the warmest night. I was sleeping in shorts and I only had like one blanket and I was like, oh my gosh. And so today it's been a little bit warm upstairs. So I've been trying to avoid it. That's why I'm reading down here, but I think I'm going to go upstairs. I think some of my friends might be starting some reading sprints soon. So I want to be able to have my laptop up and like, 
you know, participating in the reading sprints. And then later tonight, I'm actually going out to dinner with my mom. And then I'm going over to the house because I asked my mom if she wanted to have like a BTS night with me because, you know, my mom has been out of town recently. And so she's missed a lot of the recent things like, you know, the Yoongi documentary on Disney Plus, you know, Road to D-Day. I want to show her that documentary. She's also missed a lot of the recent like August D music videos. And so we're going, I'm going over to the house to like catch her up on all of the recent BTS things. Yeah, so hopefully I'll be able to read quite a bit more of this book today before I leave for dinner. from my parents' house. I had a really great night, you know, hanging out with my mom. We were watching a lot of the new BTS related things, you know, like I showed her a lot of the new August D music videos and we watched his documentary on Disney Plus. And um, earlier tonight, um, before I left, I was able to get quite a ways of the way through this book. I got up to page 216. So I feel like I'm just around the halfway point. Like this book is so lengthy. I don't know why in my brain, I was convinced that I would like get this book done by today because like in my like little schedule of like in my head of when I should be finishing up the books by, I was supposed to finish this today in my head. And I was like, there's no way I could have done that. Like this book is so freaking long and I'm still really enjoying this book, even though I do feel like, I don't know, I feel like we're getting to a point around this 200 page mark where things are starting to feel a little bit repetitive for me. And I'm starting to feel like I'm ready for the plot to move forward a little bit quicker. Like, I don't know, the pacing is definitely getting a little bit slower for me. I feel like I always have this issue when it comes to Joe Goldberg books is that they're so good. And like his dialogue in his head is just so funny to read. But then after so many pages of it, it just gets a little bit tiring and a little bit repetitive. Like, I I feel like I always feel this way where I like really love it at the start and I've like missed reading from this perspective but I don't know if it's because I'm trying to read so much of it in one day that I just start to get kind of like annoyed with it or like it just starts to feel a little bit repetitive. I don't even know at this point in time like how many times he's mentioned the show The White Lotus and it's like I know it's funny and I love The White Lotus and I love when books kind of have a lot of like pop culture references in them but at the same time sometimes it can feel so like repetitive and just like overused and just like I don't know, it's just, it's okay right now. But you know, with that being said, I am still really enjoying the plot of this book. Like I do think this book has a really strong plot, at least in comparison to the other ones. I'm finding myself more engaged in this story with these characters, as opposed to like the last two books. Like, I don't know why the last two books just didn't really work that well for me. So I'm hoping that this one will still at least be a four star, even though I feel like I'm hitting a slow point, but I don't know, I would love to finish this one tomorrow. That's kind of my plan for now. I mean, right now it's almost 11 o'clock at night and I'm feeling a bit too tired to continue reading this evening and you know tomorrow I have kind of an early morning because I have the book troop live show tomorrow morning at 10 a.m which I know it's not that early but I have to you know be awake and like ready to go by 10 a.m so like it's a little early for me so I just kind of want to you know get a good night's sleep and then definitely try to finish this up tomorrow and I can come back with some final thoughts which I love um after I like wash my hair when it's like this red color I really love how it looks looks like right after I wash it like this almost like orangey brown color or like reddish brown I don't know I feel like it looks really nice right after I wash it but then I'm always like stressed because I I feel like my hair right now I feel like it only looks good when I style it you know because if I just let this air dry right now it's gonna get very like frizzy and just kind of like ugh. and before when I just had you know my brown hair like I didn't really care that much about how my hair <laughs> looked I guess and now that it's this like you know red color I'm just like oh my gosh like I need it to look good at all times and so it's like making me want to do my hair more 
like, I don't know if that's like a good thing or a bad thing. Like, I guess it's kind of a good thing, right? Because it means I'm caring more about my appearance. And I think that that's a good thing. Because I mean, I am doing it for me. I don't know. I'm going to stop rambling and I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> next afternoon and I wanted to update because I have just finished reading for you and only you. I've had kind of a busy day. I had the book troop live show this morning with Jordaline and Katie which was super fun and then um, after that I was editing the Summerween announcement video and I was messaging a lot with like Olivia and Rachel. We were planning some like more last minute things and like I am just so freaking excited for Summerween. But anyways I finally finished this book. I feel like this book took me so much longer to read than I thought it was going to and I'm kind of bummed to say that at the end of the day I'm pretty underwhelmed by this book. I seem to have the opposite opinion, you know, because I was looking through a lot of Goodreads reviews after I finished this and I was like trying to figure out how to vocalize my feelings about this book because it's honestly around like a three star. It's just not very special. And I don't know what it is about this Joe Goldberg series, but it just feels like it's starting to get very repetitive and very the same. And I think that I might be done with it. You know, I think I might be over it, which sucks because, you know, I was a really huge fan of the first book, the book You in the series is one of my favorite thrillers of all time. But I feel like all of these sequels just, I don't know, they're just kind of boring. They're kind of repetitive. It's like you think he would learn from like situations in the past but he never really seems to and like as much as I love Joe Goldberg's you know like inner dialogue and inner thoughts like sometimes it's so freaking funny but then sometimes I feel like things get used so often that it's like not that funny anymore like the whole like Goodreads girly thing was like really funny at the beginning but then by the end of the book he was just using it so often like being like well you're a Goodreads girl and like whatever it was just kind of like it was annoying by the end of the book you know but I seem to have the opposite opinion where like I'm, I was noticing on Goodreads that a lot of people were saying that they thought the beginning of this book was really slow but then it got better over time but I feel like I actually have the opposite opinion where I really did like the beginning I liked the first like I don't know almost like 50% of this book I thought it was really entertaining but then because the story got so repetitive and it was like using the same kind of quotes like over and over again and talking about the same pop culture references, I just got kind of bored in the second half of this. And I also feel like the mystery and thriller aspects of this just never got that interesting for me because again, it feels so repetitive in the series. It feels like I've read this before. It just feels like more of the same, you know? Like I feel like Joe Goldberg is just, I don't know, like I feel like it's had its run, it's, it's run its course. I don't know, with the way this book ends, it definitely ends in a way where I could see, you know, another book coming out in this series. Like, it's not like it ends super open-ended, but it leaves room for more at the end of this book. And I just don't know if I'm interested in reading more of these books anymore because it's like, as much as I love reading from Joe Goldberg's point of view, which I really do, I think it is really entertaining for the most part, but like these books are just so like they're so long and they're so repetitive. I just don't think I enjoy being in Joe Goldberg's head for like 430 pages. You know, I just think that's way too long. And for this story, like for the plot and everything, I don't think it needed to be that long, like not even close.
know it has been a while since the last time that I updated this vlog. I've been filming like three different reading vlogs all at the same time and I've been very confused but I think it's been like a week and a half or maybe two weeks since the last time that I updated this vlog. But I did want to let you know that I have started on The Last Word by Taylor Adams and I've been so excited like I've been itching to pick this book up because I've been hearing such great things from a lot of my friends and this one is the book troop pick for the month of May so I'm very excited. I'm gonna be doing a live show with Riley at the end of this month. I think we're trying to plan it right now for the last weekend in May. But I'm so excited because this book has just been absolutely chaotic so far. I just got to part two, which puts me at about, it's like at about the 80, like 86, 87 page mark. So I just made a dent. I wanted to update though before reading part two because part one was absolutely wild so far. The general premise of this book is that we're following this woman named Emma and she posts a review, like a one star book review for this author and it's like the first review that goes up for this guy and his book and he's like a small you know like indie author like he's not really signed on to any big publishers but he's written tons of horror books like he's written like 16 horror books and, and so she posts this one star review and it's so funny because the prologue starts with it the book literally starts with the end and it's like her reading the end of his book which I thought it was really ironic and cool that the prologue starts with the end you know it was just it was ironic it was cool and and then it's funny because they get into like almost this like intense email exchange where he like emails her and he's like hey would you mind taking down your review and he kind of like makes her feel like shit because he's like as an indie author it could be hard to like get my work recognized and like yada 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 and she's like um no sorry like I spent you know four hours reading your book and I feel like it's my right to you know let other readers know my genuine opinion and like they kind of go back and forth with emails of him being like well I would prefer if you took it down and like it just it's kind of awkward it's kind of a little bit of it's a little icky you know it's kind of like ew like leave her alone and so that prologue was very interesting and then we go on to part one of the book and it's interesting because emma is going to be house sitting for this woman named jules i really like too that this book is taking place in washington because you know i live in washington so it makes it feel even more kind of creepy, I guess, because, you know, as she's starting to house sit for this lady, this book has major, like, kind of, like, creepy atmosphere of, like, you feel like somebody's watching you, you know? She's, like, staying on a beach, and there's, like, beach behind the house, and then she's also, like, friends, kind of, with this guy that lives next door. He's, like, the neighbor. He's this older man named Deke, and it's kind of cute and kind of also weird because he, like, sends her messages like from what I understand they're like holding up messages to each other in the window and that's how they're like communicating and he'll like try to do creepy things to like scare her like he'll be like oh who's that man standing behind you you know but he's like joking kind of I think I don't know but he's kind of weird you know he's a little like he's giving me some red flags like I don't know if I can trust this neighbor dude Deke but I just love the atmosphere so far I'm also finding Emma herself to be like a really relatable protagonist like she talks a lot about her anxiety she also uh, recently had a husband who I'm pretty sure he passed away. I don't know. He's not in her life anymore. It's unclear to me if he died or if they're just not together anymore. I don't really know for sure yet, but I just think, I don't know, like some of her dialogue and some of her like thoughts I just really relate to because she just talks about like, why is it so easy for some people to talk on and on? She feels broken sometimes. She, she tries to self edit in her brain. And by the time she knows what she means to say, it's too late to say it. And I don't know. It just seems like she's very like introverted to the point where she like, is a little bit afraid to like, you know, put herself out there sometimes. And it's something I can definitely relate to. She says, Emma doesn't like to be seen. Being seen burdens you with an image you have to maintain. She says, I don't understand what's wrong with me. My heart races sometimes and I feel like I'm afraid of something, but there's nothing there. Like that is just anxiety to a T, you know, like to a fucking T. But some of the things that she says too, like when she's talking about, we do get flashbacks of like her and this guy, Sean, when they were like first starting to date. It was just so beautiful the way that she speaks. She's like, I don't believe in God, but sometimes when I look out at the universe, I want to because there's so much wonder out there. It's just, I don't know. It's written in a way that's like kind of beautiful and I'm just really connecting with it so far. But oh my gosh, the way, <laughs> that this author is just getting a little bit more unhinged as time goes on because things are still happening with this author currently and it seems like I don't know I keep hearing people saying that this book just gets absolutely unhinged and more chaotic the more that you read it and so like I'm kind of here for it I don't know I'm loving it so far with the way that it's going right now I feel like this could be a four or five star book for me like I'm really enjoying myself reading it it has the perfect atmosphere that I was hoping it would have now this author's pulling this crap where he says no offense but you're a female I'm a nice guy but I have to shoot straight here on this females generally don't like action or horror it's just biology uh, uh. 
Oh my god. He's like, I shouldn't let your uninformed opinion bother me. Oh my gosh, this man dude is just the worst. This author dude is the worst. I can't even imagine. And so I'm so excited. I can't wait to see where it goes. Like, what the fuck is gonna happen in this book? I don't know. I'm currently doing some reading sprints right now on Patreon with my friend Savannah. And so I'm so excited. Like, I definitely want to finish this entire book today because I'm enjoying it so much. Like, I can easily fly through this, you know? I just cracked open a monster. I'm eating some graham crackers. I'm having a good time. And I will update you with some more thoughts when I have them. I just have a feeling this is going to get absolutely wild. <laughs> Hello, it has been a couple of hours. It's now like four o'clock in the afternoon and I just finished up with the reading sprints that I was doing with Savannah, but I thought I would update you because I'm now 230 pages into this book. I have just been flying through this book because it's been so much fun. It's so freaking action packed. I just recently hit part three of this book a little while ago and I feel like this book is doing a really great job of like the pacing. Like the pacing has just been incredible. I feel like this is pretty similar to No Exit, which is, you know, another book that I love from this author in the sense that it's like, it's all taking place on one night and it's very like isolated setting, very claustrophobic and just very intense and fast paced the entire time. I feel like I've been on the edge of my seat in the same way that I felt when I was reading No Exit. And so that makes me so happy because, you know, I wasn't the biggest fan of the, la the last hair bridge or the hairpin bridge or what was that one called? I don't know. But the last book that this author came out with, I didn't love it. And so I'm so excited that this feels more in tune with like the no exit vibes, you know, like it's just really great. I also just love, like it's hard to even talk about this book without getting into spoilery things. So I'm gonna keep this as vague as I possibly can. But I just love the way that this author is giving us like different perspectives on certain things in a way. And it's just so fucking funny to me how this author is just so full of shit. Like he's just one of those guys who's just like trying to be like super masculine and just like I'm so fucking tough. And like he tries to come off that way a lot. But in reality, he's actually like such a little bitch and he like can't handle anything. And it's just, it's really hilarious. Like I was not expecting some of these scenes to be as funny as they are like i'm just cracking up at the writing style like i'm loving the way that this book is written i feel like if you've read the book you'll know what i'm talking about like some of the choices that taylor adams is making with like the way that this author dude is being written it is just absolutely hilarious like pure entertainment i'm obsessed i'm loving it i'm also just taking um really intense notes you know because this is my book troop book club pick and i i want to remember every detail and i feel like there's so much happening at any given scene that like i need to remember all of the details. I think this author is doing a great job too with like the misdirection or kind of like misleading you in some scenes, like making you think that something's happening and then being like, oh, just kidding, you thought, and then like, you know, kind of like changing it up. I don't know. I'm just really having a great time. I definitely want to finish this tonight because I only have about a hundred pages left now. And I just had to stop in the middle of a scene that I was like, oh, like it's so intense right now. But I had to stop because the reading sprints were coming to an end. And oh my gosh, I think Rachel will know better already starting dinner so I definitely want to get down there so I can help them with dinner but I think right after I eat I might you know just jump right back in and try to finish this because I'm kind of addicted to it right now and right now it's looking like it's gonna be a pretty high rating from me which I'm very excited about like can you imagine I have two months in a row with five star book troop reads like is that even possible for me? What's up? It's later at night. It's about 10 o'clock at night, but I am back with updates because I have finished the last word. 
it was actually a really nice night. Um, I got Nutella on my shirt, but it was really great because me and my sister, we finally started watching the new season of Queer Eye, which like, oh my God, I just love Queer Eye so much. I absolutely adore Anthony. I also just really love Jonathan. I mean, I love them all, but like Anthony just, I love Queer Eye so much. It makes my heart so happy and it always makes me cry and it's just such a feel good comfort show. So that was really nice to watch. And then after dinner, you know, my sister made this amazing like avocado carbonara for dinner with like these, this garlic bread. Oh my God, it was so freaking good. And so then after dinner, I made us this dessert, which is like one of my favorites. It's like, you use like puff pastry, you just like thaw it out and then you put Nutella on it and strawberries in it. And then you just kind of like wrap them into little dough balls essentially. And then you just put some egg wash over them and you cook them in the oven at like 400 degrees for like 15-ish minutes. And I'm like, oh my God, they're just so freaking good. They were so good. But anyways, so I have finished the last word and I do have many thoughts on this book. Overall, I really enjoyed this book. I think overall, I don't know, like as far as like my rating goes, I I feel like I'm torn on what I want to rate this book. I feel like I'm gonna need more time to like think about it, but I will say that I don't think it's quite a five star book for me. I think if anything, I'm probably gonna end up rating this either four, maybe to four and a half stars if I'm feeling generous. Like I just really need to think about it more. I feel like the ending of this book just got absolutely like ridiculous and unhinged in a way where it was almost like a little tad cheese for me at times, which was fine. But I also think, I don't know, like this book was just so action packed. Like I genuinely do think from beginning to end, there was never a moment where I felt like the story was dull or like slow or like I felt like I needed things to be moving faster. Like, no, this was incredibly fast paced the entire time. I feel like the ending though is one of those endings where you keep thinking, oh, like this is it. Oh, that's the end. Oh, it's over. And then it just continues and it keeps going with the twists. It's just, I don't know if I loved every twist at the end of this book. Like there were definitely some that really surprised me and that I didn't see coming. And then there were other twists that I thought were a little bit more obvious or some things that I definitely thought were gonna happen and then they did end up happening, which like isn't necessarily a bad thing, you know, because I, I still think even sometimes when I see a plot twist coming, it doesn't mean it's like not a good plot twist, you know? But I don't know, I think at the end of the day, what I can really say about this book is that I had so much fun reading it and it's definitely one of those thrillers that I think you can, you know, if you wanted to, you can sit there and read it all within one sitting because it's very readable, you know? It's like one of those thrillers that just like keeps you flipping the pages, which is something that I really liked about it. And this book had a little bit of a story within a story element kind of happening throughout it, which is also something that I wasn't expecting that I really liked about this story. I loved the use of the story within a story and I thought it just made the writing so clever at times, which made it very fun. So overall, I don't know, I had a really great time reading this book and I'm so excited because I just figured out with Riley today that the live show when we're gonna discuss this book is gonna be happening on Sunday on May 28th at 11 a.m. Pacific time and 2 p.m. Eastern time. So if you would like to hear more of my thoughts and just hear me and Riley discuss all of the things about this book, because there's so much about this book that I would love to discuss with the spoilers. I feel like this will be a really good one to talk about all the spoilers because there's just so much going on in this book and there's so much to talk about. So I do think that this will make for a really fun book troupe and like book club live show discussion just because there's so much going on at the end of this book. And so I hope you can join me for that live show. I will have the link down below in the description so you can save the link and turn on the notifications for that live show. And I'm so excited for this live show. And I'm also just so excited that I enjoyed another book trip pick as much as I did. I think this was definitely the book that I enjoyed the most for sure in this reading vlog. I mean, <laughs> the other two books just ended up being pretty okay for me. So like, I'm glad that at least this one kind of like lived up to everything that I was hoping that it would be. So that'll be all from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'm working on a few other reading vlogs this month. I'm actually filming like three different videos at the same time right now. So I feel like the end of May, is probably going to be a lot of reading vlogs coming out from me. So I hope you enjoy. This will be the first of a few. And thank you so much for watching as always. And please let me know, of course, if you've read any of these three books, let me know what your thoughts are on them and what you're thinking about them. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for being here. Bye.